fourth dimension. My brother believes that humans can only imagine three dimensions and most of the population on earth will share his view. But I disagree. We have known for more than 500 years that we must have a fourth dimension to define the behavior of a solid body. Leonardo da Vinci was already aware of that. But it was not until Leibniz and Newton have introduced us to the infinitesimal calculus that we could clearly define this fourth dimension and we make it useful sense. In 1916, Albert Einstein proposed that also space has four dimensions. And that was a bit controversial at the time. Needless to say, we have launched expeditions to confirm that these four dimensions in space do exist. Eddington has confirmed that already three years later, in 1919. We could measure and see this fourth dimension. But on a solid body, I couldn't find any experiment that would clearly show it to the uninitiated that this fourth dimension has actually an effect on the behavior of a body. So I devised my own experiment. What I've done is I made two discs. They are precisely the same, precisely the same in diameter, precisely the same in thickness. They are made out of precisely the same material and therefore, of course, they weigh precisely the same. 388 grams each. Another thing you need to be aware of, these, these discs are completely concentrically balanced. In other words, they roll smoothly when pushed on a flat surface at exactly the same speed. There is no imbalance, no nothing. There is no hole in there. They are completely solid. But we can measure only three dimensions. I did tamper with the fourth dimension in these two discs and therefore would like to demonstrate the difference in behavior if I expose them to a force. I will use gravity as this force and thus make sure that these discs are non-magnetic, that they cannot be influenced by any other force. I have here a strong electric force, uh, a permanent magnet that I have to release from these steel discs. I switch it on again and can show that these discs have absolutely no magnetic force. When I put it back to the steel, it will flat onto the steel straight away. So they cannot be influenced by magnetic forces. They cannot be influenced by radioactive forces. The only force we will expose them to is gravity. Now gravity has a very peculiar behavior. If you could focus on this page, you can see that no matter how heavy an item is, it always falls at exactly the same speed. An apple and a feather have the same falling speed. Subject, of course, that there is no wind resistance. So if I raise these two discs to a higher potential level of energy, they will be exposed to precisely 
the same energy because they have precisely the same weight. But what you will see now, what happens? I have disk number A in the front rail and B in the back rail and I try to release them precisely at the same time. Clearly, disk A was faster. We need to repeat that. No test is conclusive unless we can repeat it. Now I release the discs again precisely at the same time. A in the front rail, B in the back rail. And clearly we can see A was faster again at the same amount of speed as before. And just to make sure that you don't think I have tampered with the rails, I move disk A into the back rail and bring disk B to the front rail. So we obviously expect A in the back rail to be again faster then B in the front row. I release. And the same thing happens. So we must explain why is it so? What's the difference between those discs? We were unable to establish with our three-dimensional analysis any difference. No difference in dimension, no difference in mass, no difference in magneticity. Now everybody that reads this book, it's called Physics, will clearly understand what I have done to these discs. This book describes every detail of the universe from the smallest quanta to the largest observable universe. It is written in every language the same way, be it Hebrew, Arabic, English or Chinese. It is a book that unites humanity on the whole planet. The problem with this book is that it does require a certain amount of intelligence to understand it. And since the largest part of the population does not have that amount of intelligence, invariably, like my brother, they try to consult another book called the Holy Bible. The difference with this book is that nothing that is written here can be verified and it completely misrepresents every little bit of work that God has done. If God would come and read this book, he would wholeheartedly embrace it. He would be proud of his work and he would be proud of us humans that we were capable of representing his good work. He would be furious about the misrepresentation of his work shown in this book. It consists of nothing but lies and misinterpretations. It is designed to incite people 
to hatred. And nowhere is that more visible than in the very place where it has been written. Anybody that would like to do evil has an opportunity to find the justification in this book. Take George W. Bush. He has found a passage in this book that told him he must murder and maim one million Iraqi people and consequently he has done so. The intellectually disadvantaged that cannot read this book have the privilege to interpret this book the way they want. Our Tony Abbott, he has found an interesting passage in here. It told him climate change is crap. And I'm sure he is genuine. He believes that this book has told him that. But not all is bad news. We have evolution on our side. If I would have conducted this experiment 400 years ago, I would have been burnt at the stake. Today, no one bothers me anymore, whatever I do. And the reason is evolution has brought up the masses of disadvantaged people a notch higher in their intellectual level. They no longer have the power to control all the world. And that's why we are now free to do things like that. But evolution will go much further. Some experts predict at the pace evolution is working right now to improve the mistakes it has made earlier that in no more than 100 years the Bible and the Quran will be relegated to a museum for posterity to see what primitive level of intellect our brains had during a short period in evolution. Everybody at this stage will be able to understand every detail of this book called Physics and they will relish in their knowledge of the fourth dimension. In the next session I will introduce you of how to calculate the difference in speed between these two disks and I will show you the methods that we have developed to visually represent a four-dimensional body on a two-dimensional sheet. The same way as we are capable now to represent a three-dimensional body on a flat two-dimensional sheet and most people have the capacity to do that. In the meantime I encourage everyone to try to make themselves familiar with this book. It will improve the earth. Until next time have a good read you may find the explanation yourself and most of you that have read it before know the answer already. Thank you.